I'm re-releasing 20 of these 3D prints to commemorate this project. I'll be selling them on my website, but I'll be giving one away to someone that answers a question at the end of the video. Enjoy the video, guys. Somewhere in between the cracks of watching movies with the sound off and faces lie the bleak era of delusional Thomas. The mixtape was released on Halloween of 2013. The contrast between kids only three years before is quite drastic. This tape really solidified the direction of music he was going with. Macadelic acted like a domino for this theme, which led to watching movies with the sound off, Delusional Thomas, and most importantly, Faces, which to me was the pinnacle of how he learned to use this voice. I've covered artists that have used aliases, or egos, previously in my videos. More notably, Quasimodo, Madlib's alter ego that rapped before he actually used his own voice. He used the idea of Quasimodo to see what raps would sound like over his production. This character eventually developed into his totally own ego, producing a few albums. Over his career, this bright yellow character with the protrusive snout became a strong part of Madlib's brand. An offspring of inspiration that came from Quasimodo is, you guessed it, Delusional Thomas. Max stated that he loves Quasimodo, and his high-pitched voice with Delusional Thomas does that. But for him, it was his own character. He wanted to give his whole own complete, like, everything. There was a part of him that wanted to do his own voice, but he wanted to be its own complete character. He really felt like the evil voice inside of your head is always in that kind of pitch. He further stated to Vice that although Delusional Thomas doesn't have a profound backstory, it definitely involves the whole thought process. He further proclaims that everyone has shit in them, and using Delusional Thomas has been therapeutic to him. He said it felt good for him to talk about his sadistic urges, that he believes that everyone has, but doesn't want to say. We were first introduced to this ego in The Star Room, off of watching movies with the sound off. He stated that he wanted to start the album off with honesty, letting his subconscious or voice inside of his head introduce us to the album. Comparing it to Circus, how a ringmaster comes out and introduces the acts to the show. The curtain then opens and the show starts which is why the subconscious dips out. He then introduced himself with, but me, I'm still trapped inside my head, it kind of feels like it's a purgatory. Only a few months later, the actual tape, Delusional Thomas, came out. The first attribute that stands out on the 27 minute tape, once you get past the gunshots of course, is the high pitched voice, which instantly polarizes the audience, because it's simply uncomfortable. He doesn't dance around the idea of shock, each line in this tape is straight to the point. This tape seems to be what a supervillain would throw on before a heist, or what a protagonist in a horror movie would throw on after a long day, after tormenting a small town. The murky, horrorcore-like instrumentals are accompanied by some of the smoothest rhyme patterns that Mac has ever stated in his career. Larry jumps right into the idea of him going on a killing spree, while Halo shares the same theme. Within the track, he mentions Hamlet, a play that uses multiple characters, as Mac is doing himself while channeling his producer Larry Fisherman and MC Delusional Thomas. Vertigo shares an instrumental similar to a chase in a thriller movie, with the victim experience Vertigo, the false sense that your surroundings are spinning or moving. With Mac's love for film, it's likely a callback to the 1958 Hitchcock film that shares the same title. I'd say one of the most profound tracks off this mixtape is Bill, featuring Earl Sweatshirt, who is no stranger to writing horrorcore lyrics. Both characters bring us this slim shady like aura. As Earl mentions, he's the biggest piece of trash that they've seen in the RV park. Both artists display a background of their characters on the track, explaining that they feel like the shadows of society. Delusional Thomas hides his face because he thinks he's not good enough, while Earl touches on his depression. That's why the winter fits him best. 72 continues with the sociopathic rhymes over a quaint xylophone. He further uses his freedom of expression with these lyrics, stating that he'll load a rifle and come after the blogs, which has had a frequent tormenting effect over his career, specifically in the beginning of it, brushing him off as another frat rap artist. In fact, Pitchfork gave him a literal one for his debut album, Blue Slide Park. The Jesuits repeat the theme of addiction, stating dealing with addictions when I beat it, then it's switching to something else. Dr. Thomas does the same, a crazed doctor who is struggling to find the balance between family time and his drug addiction. But he ensures us that he's just an angel with a violent past. Libido plays on the similar word which is defined as an emotional energy associated with intrinsic biological drives, 
or sexual desire. It looks at the afterlife, which is definitely not a new topic for Mac. But since it's in his delusional Thomas perspective, it's imagined as a parallel to his everyday, a tormenting life. Melvin takes on the identity of a classic hip hop track. Delusional Thomas goes in with a few quick bars on a sub two minute beat. But the real crown jewel of this tape is definitely Grandpa used to carry a flask. Throughout the track, you'll hear him tossing back and forth with Delusional Thomas, his subconscious and Mac Miller himself. The transition is accompanied with heavy static, mimicking the change of a channel, which would be him dipping back into consciousness. This song displays the range that Mac is capable of when summoning Delusional Thomas on the same track. They complement each other beautifully because at the end of the day, they're the same identity. The song concludes with Mac and Delusional Thomas exchanging lyric to lyric until they merge into one person. The voice becomes dubbed over the same expressions that Mac is stating. The last line on the track is, I got no talent. The only statement spoken by both Delusional Thomas and Mac Miller simultaneously. Clearly a tormenting thought that came from critics and various other negative attention that comes with being famous. He can't get rid of his darker side. It's simply something that he has to live with. This tape can be seen as a form of acceptance letting himself feel these feelings rather than suppress them, like most people do. Max stated in an interview that it felt great making this tape. He believes that everyone has some degree of these sadistic thoughts. The end of the tape serves as a perfect conclusion to Delusional Thomas, the idea of embracing emotion and saying it out loud to achieve self-acceptance. Like Quasimodo, Delusional Thomas was created as an extension of Max's brand. He strongly believed that if you stick to one brand as an artist, you can become limited because human beings are much more complex than one simple brand. If anyone proved this throughout his career, it's him. As he dipped into genres from trap to soul, proving how talented he really was through each of these hits. The same pitched up voice of Delusional Thomas ended up into the re-release project Faces, which in my opinion had the Delusional Thomas influence written all over it. We heard the voice more explicitly in Angel Dust. Through the lyric, my brain fried, always chasing the same high. I'm too f***ed up to function, do nothing but waste time. Acting as a bridge into him taking the actual angel dust. The entire lyric is spoken in the high-pitched Delusional Thomas voice, Max inner deranged voice. This bridge leads to the actual trip, or him consuming the PCP. He wakes up annihilated on the pavement, pupils dilated and highly dehydrated. Questioning himself obscure ideas such as Stuart Little's life after fame, or in other words, tripping. Just like how Quasimodo strengthened Madlib as a producer, I think that Delusional Thomas did the same to Mac Miller's career. Not only his production was strengthened through this character, but also his range of rhyme patterns. The mixtape also strengthened his confidence that he had in himself. It made him realize that he doesn't have to make music that relates to everyone. He stated after the release that he's starting to trust his own longevity. He concluded that we need to stop being afraid to make mistakes, or being afraid to put something out that people won't like. When you're really creating, you don't think if people are going to love it. He deciphered people that make music into two categories. People that have good songs, and people that can make good albums. The people that can make good albums don't worry about if people are going to like it. They just make it. The replay value on Good AM, The Divine Feminine, Swimming, and Circles are impeccable. It's clear that he picked up on the idea of making material that he truly liked to. The distress that subconsciousness can convey is definitely real. Delusional Thomas just proves that many of us avoid it. That's why mixtapes like this that have a shock factor turn people off. They face these ideas head on rather than avoid it with ignorance. Only Mac knows the feats that this tape helped him get over, but I'm glad he recorded this short 27 minute tape in his legendary career. And if you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend giving it a listen. Now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of the Delusional Thomas tape and character? Also, do you think it'll ever come to streaming services? Or do you think it's too dark for the general public? Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time guys.